Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Conditionals 8 for Part 5 of Module 1. And we have two of my, honestly, two of my least favorite um, problems in, in all of Module 1. And the reason that I don't like this problem very much is because there's nothing clever about it necessarily. It's much more about an organization and making sure that your if statements uh, kind of cover all the options. Um, and especially, you'll see in the next one, there are just a... Um, just a ton of different uh, if statements that we need to write. Um, you might be thinking that, hey, this would probably be a good idea for a switch statement. And if you only did module zero beta, you probably didn't see switch statements. Um, a switch statement is essentially another way to write a big if else chain. Um, if you'd like to learn more about switch statements, they are featured in the Udacity course, or you could definitely look them up on MDN. For our purposes, we're gonna be doing this with if else statements. So, oh. so uh, the first one is convert score to grade. They give you a score. If it's in any of these ranges, you need to return a given uh, letter grade. If the score is greater than 100 or less than zero, it should return invalid score. So I'm gonna start with that one, and I'm gonna use the way that we build the logic so that we don't have to do too many extra if-else statements. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So if score is greater than 100 or score is less than zero, we're gonna return this uh, invalid score string here. We'll just grab that, return invalid score. So there's our edge case. Uh, now we're gonna work up from the bottom. And the reason that we're gonna do that is that we're only gonna need to check if something is less than. And what you'll see is that as we move along the if statements, provided that we only ask if a score is less than a certain value or less than or equal to a certain value, it'll allow us to only check one side of it, which is to say we won't have to say if the score is less than 89 and greater than 80. We're only gonna say it's less than 89 because at that point we will have uh, exhausted all of the rest of the possibilities. So the first thing that we'll check will be if the score is less than or equal to 59. If the score is less than or equal to 59, we're gonna return F. Else if the score is less than or equal to 69. Now what we've done here is we've already taken care of every single score that is above 100, below 0, or below or equal to 59. So the only scores that remain at this point on are 60 through 100. So we can just keep moving up the, uh, there's a word for this, but I'm not really familiar with it. It has to do with, with eliminating options one step at a time, which we could just say we're doing that. We're eliminating options one step at a time. So by saying the score is less than or equal to 69, the rest of the logic ensures that it would not be uh, less than 60, that the, score, that the score is greater than 60 if we've made it to this point. So we return D, else if score is less than or equal to, what would it be, 79? If that's the case, we're gonna return C. In case anybody is curious, it's like, hey, is there another way to do this? Yes, there's always another way to do it. Well, I, I suppose that's a little bit of a, uh, too much of a sweeping generalization. There isn't always another way to do it, but in a lot of cases there is. So if score is less than or equal to, what would the last one be? 100. Then we're going to return B, no, A. So here are our edge cases, and then we move up the chain each time, and we're correct. So now this one is, it's like write a score, uh, score, convert score to grade with plus and minus. So in addition to the nonsense, I don't want to say nonsense, it's a good idea to not think of this as nonsense, but in addition to the somewhat monotonous problem that we just did, we're going to have to add in additional conditions. And we'll do so by, we're basically gonna grab all of this because this is gonna be very, very useful for us. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna copy basically the exact same problem that we had before. Now what I would proffer is that we have the same issue here for all of these problems, or for all of this section of the problem, except that once we get into here, there's a check that we need to make. We basically have to ensure that if it's 60, 61, or 62, 60, 
61 or 62. Um, return D minus. Else if, uh, what would it be? 68 or 69. Return D plus. Else, return D. And we're going to basically do that exact same thing for all of them, except for A, because A is going to be uh, 98, 99, and 100. So because 100 is obviously an A+. plus. So if 61, uh, 60, 61, or 62, that's the same as if score is less than or equal to 62. So if that's the case, we're going to return D minus. D and then minus, else if score is greater than or equal to uh, 68. And what you want to consider is that we already know the score is less than or equal to 69 and greater than or equal to 60 because of the way that we've organized the logic. So if the score is greater than or equal to 68 at this point, we know it's either 68 or 69. So if that's the case, we're going to return D plus and finally, if none of those are the case, meaning we don't have a D plus or a D minus, we're just going to return straight D. So let's get rid of this pseudocode. You can already tell that this is a little bit awkward, that you would probably not do this exactly the way that we're doing it, but we're doing it this way just because practice writing these kind of nested if else and if conditions is just a good idea. The more fluid you are with writing this stuff, the less you'll think about it and the more you'll think about the problem you're solving. And it's nice to do these kind of odd, uh, exercises in logic. So I'm going to copy and paste all of this. And I'm going to accidentally open up an inspector, which I didn't mean to, so we'll close that. And we'll copy it like we meant to and paste it in here. So instead of 62, we want 72. Instead of D minus, we want C minus. And instead of 68, we want 78. Instead of D plus, we want C plus. And then we want C here. So now that we've got the rhythm, it'll be a little bit easier to do the rest of this. Just paste this in here. Rather than 62, we want 82. We want B minus. We want 88 for B plus. And otherwise, it's going to just be B. Here's the one where we might need to... Actually, no, we won't. Uh, I was going to think that we might need to adjust this one for A pluses, but we won't, and we'll see why in a moment. So if it's less than or equal to 92, Looking at an A minus, if it's greater than or equal to 98, it'll be 98, 99, or 100 based on this. And in that case, it's going to be an A plus. Otherwise, we're just going to return an A. So we have our invalid scores, although, yeah, they want us that, to have that as well. That's written right here. So we have invalid score, which we check first. Then we check to see if it's an F. Otherwise, we check to see if it's in the D range. If it's in the D range, we need to check to see if it's less than or equal to 62. That'll be D minus. Otherwise, if it's greater than or equal to 68, it's D plus. And the same idea corresponds for all of the rest of them. So D's, then C's, then B's, and then A's. So if we run our tests, we find out that it wasn't that bad. Um, it just, it can get very frustrating if you don't happen to pick this way the first time, especially if you uh, put double bounds on both the scores. And what I mean by that is instead of saying for the first one, instead of saying if the score, let's say for B, we didn't say if the score is greater than or equal to 80 and the score is less than or equal to 89. We used the organization of the logic to help us out, which makes this much easier. And the same idea for the application with the pluses and minuses. Um, so if this problem took you a long time and was very frustrating, don't worry about it. It will be useful for you to have some practice with nested if-else statements. Um, and yeah, look at all those tests. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.